Hello Libra, welcome to your January and February 2018 Bliss Report. I almost said February because we're almost done with January, at least when I'm recording this. And uh, I'm labeling it as January and February because this used to be a feature I did in 2017 called Abundance Readings. I would do them every couple of months and take on two months at a time just to look at issues surrounding career and money and things like that. And when it came time this year to start the new series of them, I did, I wasn't feeling it for some reason. And I thought to myself, you know, I want to broaden this because I no longer felt like a lot of people are just concerned about that area of life. You know, I do have love readings that I do each month. And that is the biggest concern, it seems like. And I've often um, wondered about that because it seems like, you know, money, uh, you need it just to survive. And I was kind of surprised that, well, no, most people are surviving, at least the people that are watching these videos. And it's the emotional component that's missing in their lives. And yet the irony is a lot of times the money creeps into that and is the destructive force. At least, well, I shouldn't say many times, but it seems like that can be a corrupting influence. So, and it's not the money's fault. It's just the people's attitude towards it. So anyway, I'm going to be, um, with this reading, I want you to see if you can find any like um, messages from the universe for you to go go for it and follow your bliss in a certain area. I'm going to be using a new deck that I got on the spur of the moment wasn't planning to get called the Wild Unknown Tarot. Really am connecting with it interestingly enough. Um, I'm getting a kick uh, out of some of the cards. I did a private reading and I got the Nine of Swords and it had like worms and eyeballs and it was very <laughs> it was very gr gr grotesque, and that's perfect for the Nine of Swords, what it represents. Um, and they're like pen and ink drawings. And so I think that Librans, a lot of you are uh, aficionados of art, so I think you'll appreciate this. But um, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I will not abandon my Morgan Greer deck. That's my trusty go-to deck, but... For the first time in a long time, I have found a traditional type of tarot deck that I really resonate with. So I'm happy to use uh, this for this reading. And then I'm going to pick a card from the Akashic Tarot, which is, kind of, which is totally different than the traditional tarot deck, and a card from the Keepers of the Light Oracles, Oracle deck. I'm just shuffling the cards right now. This is the back of them, too. So there, there's that goth, gothic kind of theme. And the only thing is they're, they're matte. They're, they're uh, a good stock. I was, at first, I was afraid that they might be too thin, but they're just matte. They're not glossy. But sometimes it's hard to, like, separate the cards. So that's the only thing. So here's an example of how it looks. Kind of nice. I centered it by accident. Ugh. That's the way I did. I will show the card at the bottom when I get there because my um, tripod, I've got it precariously um, position so all right that's that I'm gonna really 
try to shuffle the, these cards and get a good um, kind of a new card because I keep getting the same cards over again. <laughs> I get I keep getting this card. I don't know why. <laughs> By the way, um, I when I was when I saw that number thirteen, I was thinking of February thirteenth, which is actually Fat Tuesday, and that's the the eve of Lent. So uh, if that means anything for anybody, if there's some kind of a a bad habit that you need to release in your life, um, and even that blue moon lunar eclipse, that could be a time of releasing bad habits too. Okay, well, I haven't gotten this one in a long time, so that's good. Odin. So, let me begin. I hear something outside. I hope it doesn't interfere with what I'm doing here. So, the central theme is the Five of Cups. This is a card. Now, if you look at this, I'm still getting used to these illustrations. I've never picked this card before. Um, I want you to think of your first impressions of this card in terms of mood. <clears throat> Does it seem that this horse is happy, is hopeful? Because the Five of Cups is a card of grief, okay? And, and it's more obvious when you see the Morgan Greer deck or the Pamela Coleman illustration of the Rider Waite deck. And, um, of course, grief has many sources. It can be the physical death of somebody that you love. Um, it can be, or, or, you know, if you've divorced and you didn't want it, or even if you did want it, there can still be a mourning period that's kind of like mourning. Um, it can be a profound disappointment. So a career that didn't work out the way you wanted it. Uh, maybe you had, you started a business and you felt like, it didn't take off the way you wanted it to. <clears throat> In the past position, we have the Six of Cups. So here's another card about with cups. Now, um, this is an example, I think, of a card that is very... What's the word? It doesn't seem to connect to what the meaning is to me. But maybe in a way it does, because the Six of Cups is a card about the past, and this has very deep roots. So maybe it's about those roots. And this may have something to do with melancholy that, that you may be experiencing that is related. Now, it's funny, because I'm thinking astrologically here, Libra, and you do have Capricorn energy. That's your fourth house. You have Saturn just entering that house. You've had Pluto there for 10 years. So it's very possible that some Librans have been dealing with family issues, maybe family of origin issues for many years. That, And, and I'm talking about things coming up from your past that you've had to kind of um, purge. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it can be issues surrounding um, childhood experiences, fa uh, parental issues, especially the mother, because the fourth house rules the mother. And um, sometimes these issues come up when you have a child, and then you start to see your life, your past through your child. Um, if, you know, people who have suffered like abuse, trauma, will find that when their child reaches whatever age that they suffered the abuse, it, it's like a flashback. It's like a trigger. So all of these things have to be dealt with because um, the person can project onto others things that are going on with that, with, uh, within themselves. Luckily for Libra, you are very good at seeing all sides of an issue. So you're less subjective than other people, and you probably wouldn't do this uh, as readily as somebody else might do it. But this could be an issue of a past love 
that disappointed you. Maybe you thought you were soulmates with this person. Um, maybe you reached out to somebody from your past and it didn't work out or they reached out to you. And the thing that I would say about that, if that's, if, you know, here I am, I told you I didn't want to do a love reading, but with Libra, oftentimes <laughs> love gets dragged into everything. And you, you're kind of like one of those signs where if your love life is on the skids, then your whole life may feel like it's in the toilet too. And yeah, that's a broad, broad brush. This isn't going to, you know, there are some Librans, I suppose, that are much more independent in that way, but I'm talking about that general tendency. And um, you have to be able to to grieve a loss. Maybe there was, um, you had some kind of high hopes about a person being significant in your life. And, you, you know, if it was somebody from your past, you may have built this fantasy about how great that relationship was only to reunite with them and find out that it, it everything had changed because it's so true. <clears throat> <clears throat> when we're younger, when we're younger, we, um, we're different people. And I found out, I, I reunited with um, a girl that I knew when I was like 10 years old. And just by the, the, this happenstance, these, these so-called random events, which I don't believe are random, I happened to just sit on a park bench and her mother was there. I didn't know her mother from a hole in the wall, uh, or I wouldn't have. I mean... I wouldn't have recognized her, that's for sure, because I had, only, I had seen her in 1976, you know. And then it was like many years later. And so I finally reunited with that woman. We were totally different people by then. Um, we were in our 40s, I guess. So it really made, you know, drove home the point that your childhood exists as an entity unto itself. It's not, and, and I'm talking about adolescence too maybe even your college days. And you're, we get nostalgic because it's so far in the past. But once you really start to relive the past, you may find that it wasn't as perfect as you thought. And that can be actually a healing thought because if you are pining away for this thing that is really um, not real, that it's really more fantasy than reality, you, you just suffer needlessly. And you can't do, you can't follow your bliss. You can't do the things that you want to do. So the higher message is represented by the daughter of wands. And uh, it's funny that they, that they say wands for this because, well, I guess they do for the court cards, which I think corresponds to the page of wands. And um, I had noted on a prior video the number eight that seems to be here, even though this is um, a page of wands. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm coming off of a flu. I'm, I'm recovered, but it's like my, um, my throat still, I still get mucus, it looks like. But anyway, um, the page of wands is a card of good news, okay? But someone had said to me in a prior video that the that the number eight was associated with um, Aquarius. I don't know that to be true. Um, actually, I would associate with Scorpio. But um, anyway, this is fire energy, and this can be pages can be good news. Um, I don't know why you know when they say daughters in this particular spread. I don't know how that corresponds to their. Uh, definitions. But in terms of the universal definition of the Page of Wands, we're talking about something that is very um, uplifting to you. You may hear some communication that makes you feel like you are alive again. So it's a, a very uh, strong contrast from that Five of Cups, let's put it that way. <clears throat> The challenge card is the Hierophant. Uh, you know, this was another card that I could not see the connection 
Now that looks like a key that he is resting on. But the Hierophant connects to um, spirituality and the higher mind. So as a challenge card, it can be simply that you are not, you're kind of neglecting your spiritual life. And if you're trying to start your own business, if you want to move to a certain location that you feel is going to make you happier, anything that you're trying to do, it's always so good to connect it with um, your spiritual path. And if you don't have a spiritual path, that's fine. But anything that um, takes you out of the world and, and just keeps you on that level. The world exists for a reason, and we I, I don't believe in ignoring the world, but I, I do believe in integrating um, our experiences in the world with something higher than that. Because to me, that's the only way to really see the totality of each, of each experience. If you just focus on the material outcome, then to me, the lessons aren't learned. Um, like for instance, grief. Um, I think people that don't have a spiritual life tend to suffer uh, from grief more or depression more. I can't, you know, I don't know if there's a a study that backs me up on that, but I just think that that's got to be true because if you put all your faith in the world and and something bad happens, you have no context. You have nothing to frame it against. It's all just these random occurrences that are making you feel bad. And if you, if you believe that there's a, a time and purpose to everything, then you take these experiences much more um, with grace, I think. <coughs> What's coming in is a really good money card, the Nine of Pentacles. And this is a card of financial abundance that is, is on your end of things. It's not like you're, it's not dependent. For instance, the Ten of Pentacles is a card that we would associate with family money, inheritance, uh, maybe a divorce settlement, where you're getting money from that's been, you know, from some collective instead of your own money. And so this can be a card that is very much a an affirmation from the universe that you can make it financially if you're trying to accomplish something and you're feeling you may be feeling a little bit down in the dumps for some reason. Maybe things haven't gone as you envision them. But there still is the potential for success. The outcome is the, is the Emperor card. I was going to say the Four of Emperor. Is the Emperor card. Oh, what a beautiful depiction with that sun. A little pop of color there. And... Um, the Emperor is, is the num well, let me just say the number four is a card of foundation. The Emperor is someone who is very in, t in charge of their life. And interestingly, the Emperor is connected to your opposite sign, Aries, Libra. So those qualities that we associate with Aries, which are just kind of this um, confidence, this decisiveness, um, Aries ruled by Mars, uh, this ability to take action, decisive action, um, that is something that you have the potential to achieve for yourself. Because, you know, Libra tends to weigh their options endlessly. And that can lead to not taking, um, not making decisions and therefore not experiencing what you want to experience. So I, hopefully um, some of these cards resonated with you. And now I'm going to pick um, the Akashic Tarot. <clears throat> pick a card from that and then from... Oh, no, I already did that. Oh, so now I just have to go to the card. Okay, let me get my booklet. And as I stated... Um, 
before. I'm, I'm not crazy about having to read from these booklets because it seems a little bit, you know, stilted. But it is what it is because I don't know what the... I can't just tell you what these cards mean. So I think that the, this is like the equivalent of the Major Arcana because it's uh, just number 13. The Buddha prepares. The Buddha sits meditating. The hills in the background are dotted with other people meditating and patiently waiting for him to speak, but he won't move a muscle until he is ready. This card shows a time of inner preparation before action. Before you can reach outside yourself, you must reach within to find your power, your purpose, and your direction. This period of time may feel a little like waiting, and it appears so in your exterior life because some points of action seem to be at a standstill. Really, though, you're just taking the time that you require to prepare and to truly step into your power. Don't be in a hurry. The time to act is coming, and when it's here, your strength will be absolute. And I think that goes very nicely with the Emperor card, because the Emperor, you know, the number four, preparation and organization. And that may be something that some of you need to do in order to launch something effectively. And, you know... When people launch something prematurely, it can it can be kind of half assed. Sorry for the profanity. <laughs> um, Odin, and it says, psychic insight. Your third eye is open. See the truth for what it is. Follow your intuition. Odin is the Norse all-father God, who is revered to the present day. He is a powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing God. His twin flame is Freya, Freya, and like her, he has a raven totem. The story goes that he surrendered one of his eyes at a mystical spring called Mimir so that he could gain the wisdom of the ages. He is a strong but somewhat wild character who helps us reawaken our natural psychic instincts and open our third eye so we can look beyond the physical senses and into the spiritual realms. He also helps us recognize that it's okay to have insights into what's happening next. After all, we are the creators of our path. Odin guards the runic alphabet too and works closely with signs, symbols, and omens. You are being encouraged to look beyond what your physical eyes are showing you. Look within and follow your intuition or psychic visions. You may want to plan ahead at this time. It's important to keep your mind and energy focused on the best possible outcome. There will be signs and symbols from the light to tell you that you are on the right path. Be aware of winged beings gracing your path as a wink from Odin and the light keepers to say that they are honoring your work. And I think with that Hierophant as the challenge, um, just embrace that aspect of life you know you are an air sign and air signs tend to intellectualize their experiences and the mystical path and, and mystical experiences are the exact opposite some people call them irrational um, when you can't figure out why something is happening how did that I mean how many times have I been in a room and it, for me, it always seems like it's a kitchen. And something fl flies off a shelf and there was no, I, I wasn't like there, right, you know, right before. So it wasn't, you know, teetering on the edge of something. It just seems like it, it you know, it did it on its own. There are so many unexplained things, lights flickering all of a sudden when, when the bulb is not uh, about to go out. Uh, and you might have just been talking about a person who has crossed over or, you know, there's all these kinds of experiences and some people just rationalize them away. And that closes that psychic portal or that, you know, to, to, to your life that is another dimension of our, our existence. And 
don't close that off. Even if you don't believe in it, keep an open mind at the very least. And who knows what will, what kind of symbols will guide your path, especially if you feel that you are confused about what it is that you're here to do. Because it, the more that you can keep an open mind and just look around you, you may get signs that can help you. And they could be from your spirit guides. It could be from loved ones who have crossed over. You never know. Okay, Libra, I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have a great couple of months, or actually a month and one week. Take care. Bye.